So I was initially going to make a video about the Flash trailer, but a few hours ago we got a new trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and it already has more views than the Flash trailer, which is kinda sad because you'd think that the Flash is a bigger and much more iconic superhero, but I guess Marvel just knows how to market their superheroes. Anyways, I thought it would be a cool idea to put these two trailers head to head and kind of see which trailer gets me more excited to see the movie, and overall which trailer is better and does the better job at promoting the movie. So starting off with the Flash trailer, we see Barry revisiting his old house with another look at this new suit of his, and I don't know about this suit, I mean they removed the collar so his neck just looks very awkward and kind of like a off especially with the shape of the cowl and all those you know unnecessary lines going down the suit I think it looks a bit better in this next shot but overall the suit does look pretty good in most of the shots so I'm not really complaining also we have narration from I think either his father or maybe Bruce Wayne or both if you were to go into the past you have no idea what the consequences can be I could fix things you could also destroy everything. One thing that I am kind of curious about is why did they change the color of his lightning? I mean don't get me wrong the flash always looks good with his iconic yellowy orange lightning but Ezra Miller's flash has always had that bluish white lightning so I don't know if they changed it in the movie to kind of signify that there are two different versions of the flash you know one will have that white lightning and the other one will have the orange lightning so I don't know I guess we'll have to see about that. So why do you want to stay and fight to save this one? This is the world where my mom lives. I'm not gonna lose her again. Also, it does seem like we're getting the Flashpoint storyline in this movie, which I mean is always a great storyline, especially in the Flashpoint movie, and I'm really curious to see what other surprises we get in this film. Because according to James Gunn, this film is one of the best superhero movies ever made. So he's making a very bold claim right there, but I guess we'll have to see if he's right or not by the time this movie comes out. Time has a pattern that it can't help reliving. Different people, different worlds. And if they truly are doing the Flashpoint storyline, then that means we'll most likely see the Reverse Flash. And I haven't seen anyone really talking about who the Reverse Flash could be. I've seen a lot of people fan casting the Reverse Flash, but I haven't seen anyone who's confirmed to be in that role. And I mean, he kind of has to be in this movie because he's the one who ultimately always ends up killing Barry's mother so it's just really cool that they've been able to hide that character for so long and I'm really curious to see how he looks in this movie and also who plays him in this movie. Oh I'm not like the Flash at all. Some would say I'm the reverse. Anyways we get our first look at the Flash ring and I must say it does look very cool. Also what would a superhero movie be without a sky beam? Even though this is the same sky beam from Man of Steel so it kind of gets a pass but it's still a sky beam in a superhero movie. And I must say it's really awesome to see General Zod returning again. <laughs> And I never thought I'd see the day where Michael Keaton returns as Batman, saying his iconic line, as always. Yeah. I'm Batman. You know, in most movies this would sound extremely cheesy, but for some reason it just works really well in this moment. So I'm glad it's not overly cheesy and it's actually very satisfying. Nice. Not only that, but we get some action with Michael Keaton and we get to see a look at his Batman wardrobe and my goodness, it looks fantastic. And his Batsuit looks just as stiff as I remember. What's the play? Batman, what do we do? I'm also really glad that Ben Affleck has such a major role in this movie because he kind of deserves it. And I really wonder who we'll be getting as Batman as part of the new DCU because at the end of this movie we're supposed to get a tease as to who our new Batman will be. So I'm kind of curious and slightly nervous but maybe James Gunn will surprise us. Also we get more scenes with Supergirl and she looks extremely badass. And it seems like she will be the Superman replacement in this movie because in the Flashpoint storyline it's Superman who's held captive and and kept away from the sun but in this movie it seems like Supergirl is the one in that position. Barry what are you doing? Our kids are gonna want to see this. But anyways the Flash trailer does look pretty awesome and this movie is a very big one for the DCU so I just hope that they stick the landing because it would be very embarrassing if this movie flopped. 
That feels like an oversimplification. And is it just me or is this movie giving anyone like Spider-Man No Way Home vibes mixed with in-game because they're going back in time to previous movies but it's also a combination of other characters from other multiverses so this is going to be a very interesting one and I'm really curious to see how it performs because it could either do really well or really badly but I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. By the way I would really appreciate it if you tap that like button and subscribe if you haven't yet. Okay so let's move over to Guardians of the Galaxy volume 3. And of course, what is a Guardians trailer without some awesome music? I formed the Guardians. So it already seems like Gamora has kind of joined them, but not fully on board yet. Came back a total dick. Oh, please. And just by looking at Rocket as a baby raccoon is already making me so emotional because why are they waiting till the third movie to give us his backstory unless they plan on killing off his character, which I feel like that if they do that I'll be so mad I would be so heartbroken Rocket is like one of the most amazing characters in the MCU so I would be utterly heartbroken and I would really be so upset if they killed off his character okay how much for the arm oh I'll get that arm let the small kids sing so we can all hear it because here it is Christmas Bucky's arm we all want someone and I wouldn't be surprised if they killed off some of the main characters like Drax, Nebula, Rocket. I don't know about Peter Quill, maybe, but I don't think so. Because Guardians of the Galaxy is one of those movies where they know just how to balance humor and emotion throughout the entire film. He may have been your father, boy, but he wasn't your daddy. I'm sorry I didn't do none of it right. I'm damn lucky you're my boy. I'm loving that Groot is still such a massive beefy tree i think that's just so hilarious anyways i think there is an imposter among us yellow looking kind of sus <laughs> and i mean really now like those suits with those colors i'm sure that is no coincidence there are no accidents <sighs> and of course we get that classic shot of a superhero flying through the air from a pigeon's point of view adam warlock does look pretty cool not like as cool or as badass i was expecting but it does look all right in live action i mean it's all right like anyways it seems like rocket has met some more talking animals and yet again we get another classic shot but this time it's two heroes standing back to back shooting around them i mean it is one of the standard tropes that we kind of get in an mcu movie <laughs> always searching for a family until we found each other is it just me or does peter quill kind of sound like dom toretto you know in this moment we were always searching for a family until we found each other i'm also really digging the splashes of color that we get throughout this film but i doubt this is going to be a happy film and i'm not sure if i'm overthinking it but this music does have some kind of hints that you know of loss like someone just isn't gonna make it Whoever it was that you were in love with, it sounds more like her. Her? That's Do not bring me into this. Oh <laughs> Knock it off! What? Hmm, I wonder if Star-Lord and Nebula are gonna get it off in this movie. And then that maybe that would make Gamora jealous, who knows? That could be a possibility, but I mean, that's just a theory. A film theory. Never noticed how black your eyes were. They were replaced by my father as a method of torture. He, he picked a pretty set. So if I had to compare these two trailers, you know, the Flash and the Guardians trailer, I mean, again, they are two very separate trailers because the Flash is kind of like the birth, you know, the rebirth, the starting of a new era towards the future of the dcu and the guardians is kind of like the ending it's wrapping up from what the previous two movies had built upon so it's like saying goodbye to some characters i would assume and that is very heartbreaking but i mean which trailer is more exciting and gets me more eager to see the film even though i'm gonna see both films regardless because you know dc marvel but like if i had to choose between the two trailers just you know purely based on the studio's ability to intrigue someone and basically promote 
this form. I think that the Flash might have a slight edge over the Guardians based purely on the fact that this has got to do with the multiverse. And who doesn't like multiversal crossover events, especially when it's got to do with time travel as well. Like I wouldn't be surprised if majority of people went to see this movie just because of Michael Keaton. But I want to know which movie are you guys most excited for? Obviously I would assume you're going to see both anyways, but which one, you know, is kind of more appealing to you? And which trailer do you think is the better one? Anyways, if you want to check out my video on why the new DCU is confusing, then click here. And I'll see you guys in the next one.